Hi, everybody. I'm Karthik, one of the co-founders and the CTO of Yugabyte, and uh, here to introduce the company and the product, Yugabyte DB. Yugabyte DB is a transactional distributed SQL database that's primarily designed for resilience and scale. By transactional, of course, what, what I mean is it is good for running user-facing OLTP applications. It is 100% open source. It's PostgreSQL compatible because it reuses the upper half of PostgreSQL. It's an enterprise-grade RDBMS, and it's built to run across all of your cloud environments. Why do we need another database? Well, the question we get asked the most, or we got asked when we started the company and building the database, is there's 200 databases out there. Why build the 201st? Well, hold that thought. The first thing is that we have to realize that's changing is that business innovation is putting pressure on traditional systems of record. These transactional database systems of record now need much more skill and elasticity in order to uh, drive the applications on top. Uh, the customers, on the other hand, always expect the data to be real time, close to wherever they are so that they get low latency responses and always on, whether you have failures, outages, or operations. You also have uh, regulatory requirements like GDPR that force you to think in terms of geographic distribution and partitioning of data. Cloud native architectures as people are moving towards them demand flexibility because failures are the norm and expect resilience. Traditional licensing models to get all of this accomplished gets very expensive, represents lock-in, and is proprietary. Existing systems of record were also not designed for the rapid iteration that's required in a cloud-native application. And there's also a strategic need for enterprises to maintain cloud vendor independence. So the question then shifts to how do I achieve horizontal scale without compromising my system of record in terms of uptime or integrity of data? How do I ensure high availability and resilience, whether I'm doing an upgrade, a patch, or, uh, or there's an unplanned failure? How do I deploy and manage services on Kubernetes, bare metal, VM in a public or private cloud? There could also be hybrid deployments that cut across these different clouds. How do I minimize the disruption of moving from a traditional database uh, by not having my developers relearn a completely new API? How do I spend less time managing all of this stuff so I can offer a database as a service internally to folks, to the developers in the company so that I can get agility? The question also comes up as to boosting developer productivity by reusing the known frameworks and ecosystems and modern tools so that they can hit the ground running without having to build a bunch of these or learn new ones. Security is always top of mind in the cloud, so how do I match or exceed the security guarantees of my traditional systems of record in the cloud? And how do I achieve low latency by denormalizing data for applications that require real, uh, like low latency, high performance serving? And finally, how do I do all of this keeping costs in check? Right. So. These are some of the questions, some of these, and most of these always end up catching up with various businesses. Well, today, the landscape before Yugabyte, when we analyze this, coming back to the question of why, do we, why did we build the 201st database, is that the existing databases either offer a bunch of properties on the left or a bunch of properties on the right. But the real ask is, can I get both, right? And that's happening very quickly with the evolution of the cloud. So, Yugabyte DB, when we had built it, was designed specifically to build up, to bring all of these properties together and to answer the question about building a new database and people having to come up to speed with it, we decided that we're going to keep the APIs of Yugabyte DB well to stick to well-known APIs such as PostgreSQL and Apache Cassandra. So Yugabyte DB at its core is highly available and resilient. It's horizontally scalable. It's geographically distributed, and it can do relational and, and asset transactions at low latency, can run in Kubernetes or, um, or bare metal or VMs, is 100% open source and multi-API. To jump real quick into a high-level architecture, you can think of Yugabyte DB as being split into two logical um, portions. The upper half is the language layer, the Yugabyte query layer, which is pluggable and currently supports 
Apache Cassandra compatible YSQL API and the Postgres SQL compatible YSQL API. All of that runs on top of a co common lower half, which is the storage layer of Yucobyte, which is a document-oriented storage layer built along the lines of, di of Google Spanner. Now, you can see the difference between building resilience through effort as one example. Resi let's take resilience, right? Like building resilience through effort where you hear of a number of outages of databases that were running, that are running in the cloud but were not originally designed to do so versus something like Yugabyte where one of our users, Plume, that has a massive footprint, a massive number of operations per day on Yugabyte. They do like you know, 27, 30 billion operations in a single day uh, dealing with mission business critical data, right? They were able to survive the failure of an entire zone for three hours in an EU region. This happened in the, around the middle of November 2019 when uh, AWS had an entire zone go out. Yugabyte DB was able to detect and survive the failure even before the outage notice was put out and was able to recover even before the recovery notice was put out because software is just far better at doing these types of operations than humans. Now, if you layer on the Yugabyte solution, it is also possible to get the Yugabyte DB to run across any of your cloud environments with great ease. Here's a snapshot of the Yugabyte platform UI that lets you quickly configure and run across any public or private cloud of your choice, including managed Kubernetes environments. So, what are the offerings that Yugabyte has? We spoke quite a bit about the core database, which is completely open source. Uh, that the core database called Yugabyte DB is community supported and is fully feature rich, nothing held back in the enterprise. So even things like um, encryption, security, uh, day two operations, like taking backups and restore, all of that stuff is completely in the open source. The Yugabyte platform combines everything that Yugabyte DB has and builds a layer of a UI on top of that which allows you to click and provision or do so using a REST API along with operational simplicity, and it's, it's like a packaged database as a service in, in software. It also comes with support. And finally, the third product, which is, our early, which is still in its early stages, is the Yugabyte Cloud, which is a fully managed database as a service with a self-service UI. That's all I had. Hopefully you were able to get a flavor and an understanding of what Yugabyte offers. Thank you.